Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to No Risk No Risk. I don't chicken care tech. about chickens. So I want to start off by saying just how impressed I am with Tristan Tate. This guy is ice cold and pragmatic to the end. I know it's cruel. I know factory farms are cruel. I know where my chickens come from. I know where my beef comes from. I'm not a stupid person. I know I, I've killed animals myself. I've killed pigs with, with knives. In fact, on a part of a reality TV show. So I'm not a coward. I know exactly where my food comes from. When he was in jail, he cracked on with it. When he was on the island, he cracked on with it. He basically just cracks on with it. And that's a good lesson for all of us to learn. Be pragmatic, just crack on with things, whatever the situation is. I, yeah, I don't, yeah, okay, I don't yeah, care yeah, about I mean, chickens. He recently did a strange, peculiar interview with a vegan YouTuber who is an animal rights activist who goes by the name of Joey Carbstrong, which is quite an ironic name being a vegan. You know, carb strong, strong from carbs. Anyway. I was very surprised when I saw this interview, or at least the title of the interview, Tristan Tate Debates Vegan Activists. I thought, what the heck is this guy doing? Why the hell is he talking to vegan activists for? It doesn't really make any sense. I watched it and I have to tell you that at least from Tristan's side, it was a very, very interesting conversation. Let me tell you something that humans and animals have in common. It's a very basic concept that almost every animal in the world has in common besides the like, octopus and a few others. It's called the preservation of one's own species. So if you take a piranha, a tiny little angry fish with a brain the size of a pea, you put any piece of meat or a human or a horse or a dog or a pig into that pond and it's bleeding, the piranhas are going to rip it apart. But piranhas don't eat other piranhas. No species survives if it does. The preservation of one's own species is more important than the preservation of other species. That's why lions don't hunt and eat other lions. That's why they eat other things. So if you want to talk about traits that we have in common, then I as a human saying, yeah, screw the pig, I'm going to eat him, and I'm not going to kill and eat other humans. There's something that we have in common with every other species. So here, Tristan proves a few things straight off the bat. The first thing is to have convictions in what you believe in, not to waver based on what the other person is trying to do or say to you, but to know exactly what you believe in and go all in on what you believe in without any shame. And I guess that can only really come from someone who knows themselves. You also said factory farming is an amazing invention, even though it's just basically an infinite suffering machine that's yeah. like dead birds dying on their faces and uh, pigs suffering to death on the floor of their own, like yeah. laying in their own feces, yeah. like mothers like stuck in cages and like piglets being smacked on the I mean, ground and their, like, their you, heads you, you, like you, on the concrete. You like say, horrible places here. I, I know you say mothers though, but I feel like the language you use is trying to get some sort of emotional response. Mothers, I have a mother, you have a mother. There's the mother of my children who I care deeply about. It's a chicken. What I found most interesting was Tristan's depth of knowledge in a variety of different topics. And it's clear to me that he reads a lot and he cares to remember the things that he reads. And then he analyzes the things that he reads to understand it for himself. And what's really important is that he's able to then articulate what he's learned and analyzed in a debate with somebody who specializes in this field and this topic specifically. I don't care about chickens. Now let's get into the main reason for this video. Tristan and Joey were having a discussion on the ethics of slaughtering meat. Why am I the type of person who you thought it would be beneficial to have a veganism debate on? Because I truly don't care. As of right now, I don't care 1% about any of the issues vegans bring up. And they were both at loggerheads with each other. One side would not agree with the other on anything. That was until Tristan brought up Islam. I mean, Islam gives a guide on how to kill animals. And I know everyone's like, oh, that's cruel because it's with a knife. Well, there were no bolt guns invented in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the guidance is actually very, very good. Don't let the animals see the knife, etc. Now, pause for a second. Yes, obviously his brother Andrew is a Muslim, but again, what he shows is his depth of knowledge in different topics. And it's clear that he's understood what halal is. And you can imagine if Andrew is ordering halal food, someone like Tristan, who is naturally inquisitive, is going to look into what is this halal thing. And that really shows the level of detail that he goes into when he's trying to study a topic. 
and his knowledge of halal meat is something which is beyond what most Muslims born or reverted know about. And rather than taking the subject of halal meat at face value and saying, oh, it's just cutting by the throat and draining the blood, he's demonstrating something very, very powerful, which is that Islam is a complete way of life which explains the perfect way to live, which is to live in a halal way. And he does that by saying that Islam gives a guide for how to slaughter the meat. I mean, Islam gives a guide on how to kill animals. And what's profound is that Joe is not able to even deny that Muslims slaughter their meat in the most humane way possible. In Islam, actually, there you, you brought up Islam before, but in Islam, there's actually like a little bit of something about animal welfare in, in their yep. religion where they, they believe that causing animal suffering and cruelty is haram. So what does Islam teach us about slaughtering meat? And halal doesn't refer to just the way that we slaughter meat. It's a way of living, including how you conduct business. And I know that most of you watching this are people who want to escape the matrix. And that's why you all follow and love the Tate brothers. But in order for you to escape, you need to have a plan in place that's going to allow you to be able to make money in a halal way. And that allows you to leave your job quickly and start building your own wealth portfolio. I've created a free training video explaining how to escape the rat race. It's a seven step formula that I've implemented to make money literally out of thin air. So if you want to be able to escape the matrix, travel the world and live life on your own terms then click the link below now to watch your free seven step training video on exactly how you're able to make six figures every single year using only your laptop and and just if you're if you're if you're a religious person like say you're muslim you're, you're christian whatever look in that look in that factory farm look in that slaughterhouse of the suffering and the, the animals dying in their own blood and go is that god or the devil so you can see here that joey brings up the topic of muslims again and he's doing it because he couldn't argue this whole time against the way that Muslims did actually slaughter the meat or at least the way that Islam teaches Muslims how to slaughter their meat. So being Tristan's interlocutor in this conversation, he tried it again. But again, Tristan's response is profound and what he says will shock you. Well, I think you're falling on your face here because we started this argument with you saying that you don't believe in a God. And now you're trying to say, oh, but it's wrong what happens to chickens. So is that the devil? And now you're invoking the devil. This is a very powerful debate tactic that one must catch on to very quickly in a conversation, which is why are you bringing up something that you don't even believe in? It's the work of man. And but, but I love Tristan, chickens. I'm just, I'm just... I remember last weekend I was at Speaker's Corner and I got into a conversation with a Christian man. And this Christian man said to me, Jesus is God because he said that he's the first and the last. And one of the 99 names of Allah is the first and the last. And I said to him, even if one of the 99 names of Allah is the first and the last, why do you care about that? Why are you bringing that into this conversation? Because you don't even believe in Islam. So if you don't believe in Islam, how can you use Islam to prove your point? And if you are using Islam to prove your point, it doesn't make any sense because you're using something that you don't believe in to prove something that you do believe in. It's incoherent and it's nonsense. I speak, I speak to Muslims quite a lot and uh, we have actually quite productive discussions. Wonderful. Um, now... Now they at least believe that causing animal suffering and cruelty is is wrong, is moral, is morally wrong, and, and it's haram. You can't eat that. Look, I find this really interesting because Joey is like the ultimate vegan. His whole niche, his whole personality, his whole persona is about being an animal rights activist, and yet he has respect for the rights that Islam gives to animals. Are so, you are you a Muslim? No, I'm not a Muslim. Why are you invoking their Why are you invoking their arguments here? And once again, Tristan pulls him up on this. Okay, but what I'm saying is that that, that uh, 
you don't even believe that causing animals cruelty in factory farms is wrong. And you brought up Islam before and said, oh, they just slit the animals throats. Hmm. Right. And, and you believe that's a good way of doing it. Yes. So at this point, Joey is very desperate to think of something, anything to argue. Tristan at this point has unequivocally destroyed every single argument that Joey has put forward. And not only that, he's even come close to converting Joey to Islam. To Alhamdulillah. I was surprised and I was shocked that I was so fascinated by this conversation because it showed me the importance of being inquisitive and learning and sticking to your convictions unashamedly. And what I found most interesting is by the end of this conversation, two non-Muslims, one of whom is a self-proclaimed atheist, vegan, animal rights activist, both agreed that the most humane system for slaughtering animals is the halal zabiha way. And so I'd like to extend an invitation to have a discussion with Tristan about my beliefs as a Muslim and your beliefs as a Christian. And I'm not a da'i. I'm not a person who gives da'wah. I'm not a person who spreads the message of Islam in that sense. But I am a Muslim and therefore I should be able to articulate the reasons for why I believe and know that Islam is the truth. And you as a Christian should also be able to have the ability to articulate the reasons for why you believe Jesus is God. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure that you leave a comment below, a thumbs up, you share this video, and most importantly, make sure that you subscribe. And if you're a non-Muslim and you're interested in learning more about Islam and would like to have a conversation with somebody about the basics of Islam and again, why a person who is a Muslim believes in what they believe in, then I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Follow me over on Instagram and send me a DM if you are a non-Muslim and you'd like to have a conversation about Islam. I would be very, very interested in having that conversation and more than happy to share my thoughts on the truth of this world and where we're going in the next life, inshallah. Thanks so much, guys. Like, share, subscribe. See you in the next one.